All right, let's see if we can do this. Yes! Finally got it. Hi there, this is Sandwich Second Tier Sound. Really nice to see you here. You know what? I actually did not know of acoustic samples. But the other day, a friend of mine told me, you really gotta check them out. They're very interesting. And funnily enough, the day after that, they contacted me and wondered if I wanted to check out their new library, V wins and they are using a different technology they call it hybrid technology where they don't just use samples and they don't just use modeling but they combine the two and I think the result is really interesting I don't use any articulations or key switches here. Everything is done with the hands and a mod wheel, or in this case, a breath control. A lot of you are probably wondering if you really need to have a breath controller in order to control this instrument well. And the good news is that you actually don't. It works really nicely with the mod wheel, but the breath control just makes life easier. I'll show what I mean. So if I use the mod wheel, you really wanna work it because if you just leave it and don't touch it the decay is not that natural it just ends abruptly so if you have a breath controller it's just a lot easier because you don't have to think about it so the ui is really simple and extremely complex. But the good thing is that you don't have to worry about the complex part at all. You can just play and use your mod wheel or breath controller and your fingers. As you might have noticed, there are some red keys standing out here. Are they articulation key switches? No, they're not. They're just sort of clever tricks. First one is just to sound the keys of the instruments. And then we have a fall. And a rise or slide up or whatever you call it. And then we have what I really love. It's so simple, but so useful. Now, you might have noticed if you play with legato libraries in general that repeated notes are very difficult to do, almost impossible. You sometimes have to use a different articulation in order to do so. You can't even play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star with a legato library, but now you can. Listen to this. So just by hitting that one key, any long note just becomes a repeated note. Brilliant. So useful. So good. And then we have two slides up and down. Just makes it a lot easier to do than the pitch wheel, I find. And then the last thing, which is brilliant, is... You 
You see, I wasn't breathing, that was the sound of the breathing. And he reacted to how hard he hit the key. Just brilliant. Then we have three main controls in the middle. And it's basically vibrato here, which can be controlled in three different ways. It's auto time, which I prefer. Basically, when you play, the vibrato comes on when it's necessary. You can still move it and do more if you want. In general, I find it better to just have it down here. It sounds the most natural to me. Then auto, just auto, it just comes on at the same time all the time if you prefer that. And then we have also manual, which I think only really works well if you have a controller like I do. Now I haven't connected it that way because I don't use it, but basically I could shake my head a little bit and get that natural vibrato effect. You could use this control down here, but it's very difficult to do, right? It's just, nah, it doesn't really work. I think it only works for a breath controller that has that feature. Then in the middle, we have, as you've seen, the CC1, or in this case, my breath controller. And then on the right side, we had virtual space, which is a reverb that can be turned off or used less. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that later. Now, you don't need to do anything else, but if you want to tweak this instrument until Kingdom Come, you can. We have three interesting tabs down here. The first one is Mix, which is quite straightforward, but also really nice. That's there. We have three different mics. We have a three-band EQ, and we also have different kind of reverbs, and they're really good, all of them. But the most interesting one is the one that is on by default, a Virtual Space Room. And let's go to that Virtual Space right here, the second tab. So what is this? Well, I love this interface. This is so clever. Instead of knowing how to set this right in your reverb and all your settings, you can just place an icon here. Now, in the beginning, it's in the middle. Let's place it in different places so you can hear the difference here. Now, if you have a normal orchestra setting, then the bassoon or the contra bassoon in this case is always usually at one place. But this is so nice. Like, pay attention, other people who do virtual instruments. This is the interface we want. We don't want to be, you know, technical nerds and figure out everything and how to get the reverb right. We just want to click and place it, and then we have the sound. And not only that, you can even change the microphone type, how they basically place the microphones. It's always two stereo mics and you can do the stereo width and the room size. Brilliant. All right, then we have preferences, and here it comes a little bit too much perhaps, but still nice. You can basically mess with any parameter you can think of. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but a few ones that I find very, very interesting is note pitch imprecision and attack pitch variation, stuff like that. By changing them, the instrument actually becomes a little bit more natural in a way because a real musician doesn't always hit all the notes perfectly. And even here, format control, natural variation, kind of nice. If you move that one up to max just to see, you're going to hear this. You hear it's like wavering a little bit. Let's move it all the way down. Still there, but much less. So I like to move that in, you know, move this a little bit, maybe do note pitch imperfection. Let's do a crazy one here. Actually, let's just add them up. And so it just comes a little bit out of tune, but just by moving them a little bit there, I find that it just becomes way more natural. It's it's not bad by having them all the way down, actually. It, it works really well, but if you want just a little bit more sort of not that fine-tuned, it's really nice. One of the most important thing here, if you really want to tweak, is going to format control. You could see this as an EQ, basically, but you can then change the sound. You know, if I turn it on here, you're going to see... I did a kind of extreme thing there and I didn't fine tune it at all. But listen to the difference. So what do I think about this library? Well, in fact, 
I think it's fantastic. And I'm a little bit worried that you're going to think that I'm sponsored by these guys because I'm so positive, but I promise you I am not. This is just my opinion and I'm totally blown away about this hybrid technique where they're using a modeling and samples combined, which I think is excellent because I've tried other modeling samples in the past and I really like them, but still I find most of those libraries sound a little bit strange, sort of uncanny valley, little synthesizer sound still. But this one doesn't really have that problem. Well, gotta be honest, I did find there was a little bit facing problem issue weirdness in the vibrato. But I did find I could control that by having a little bit less or just at certain times. So it wasn't a big problem. In general, really love the sound, really easy to play. And also love their interface, like they're having these different key switches for breath sounds and the repeated legato, which is so simple, but brilliant and why hasn't anyone done that before at least that I know of and also like that you can place the instrument in the room in different places so easily and I do want to say that you don't have to worry if you don't have a breath control you don't need one it is easier and more fun to play yes the mod wheel it works really well it's well programmed and very expressive so you just get used to that and I promise you you'll get the same results and it won't be a problem I did check out some of the other libraries because I was really impressed by them so I checked out the brass the v horns or the v saxophones whatever they're called that's the best thing I have ever heard the saxophones, they're incredibly difficult to get right. Check that out if you're into those instruments, if you need them. That was pretty impressive. I also hope that they will come up with more libraries like flutes, for example, because now I really want to know what that's going to sound like. These reeds are definitely coming into my template. They have a spot there. I highly recommend them. That's going to be it for this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit the like and subscribe or write a comment what you thought about this library. Is it as good as I think it is or do you know better ones? What do you use? And also, I just want to tell you that my course Compose Yourself is done now. and You can find the link below. It's a great course if you need good structure, if you want to learn how to become both creative and productive. Something that not a lot of people talk about, you know, how you have a good work structure to make sure you don't get bogged down. How do you take care of yourself and get a better mindset to get music done? So if you're interested, check the link below. Anyway, until next time, I hope you write a lot of good music and take care.